Praise the Lord. This is Reverend Essie, and I'm coming at you on the 12th of March, Wednesday, 2014. I would like to discuss with you the number 333. I don't know how many times you've done it, but I've been doing it for years. Have you ever uh, waken up at 3.33 a.m. and you don't know why you're awakened, why you're awoke? What happened to wake you up at 3.33 in the morning? And I will tell you what happened that you woke up at 3.33 in the morning. God woke you up so that you can pray and intercede for people. And when this happens to you, just pray. You don't, even if you don't say the words, meditate. Meditate on good things. Meditate on Jesus, the power of Jesus Christ and what he can do in people's lives. There are people out there that really, really need you and you don't have to have credentials or a college degree to pray for somebody, amen? And I did some study, and I, years ago, I was sleeping and something whispered into my ear loud. It was like a loud whisper, so to speak, and it said, three, three, three. And it was years ago. It had to be around 99 or 2000, and I could never understand why that happened to me. And it was as though somebody was standing on the side of my bed, whispering into my ear as I was sleeping. And my spirit woke up. I woke up enough to know that that, that had been whispered into my ear. And I kept, I kept studying and studying and looking around and looking around, wondering why I had heard this number, 333. Today, March 12, 2014, uh, I, I hate that it took so long for me to understand this, but God is good, though. It's a good thing. God, God uh, you know, he shows us things uh, when we're ready, when, on his time, not ours. And it took me that long to find out that 333 is a number in Hebrew. If you look it up, it's a number that refers to none other than Jesus Christ himself. In Hebrew, the name Yeshua, which is Jesus' real name, corresponds to 333. Amen. I believe now that I've studied and found this information, I believe God is showing me that Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsaken you. I am called by him to do his work, uh, whether somebody likes it or not. I'm doing it for the kingdom of God. I'm not doing it for numbers or, or, or just to be famous. I'm doing it because other people, humble people, need to hear the word of God. And I just happen to be one of those people that people somewhere, no matter how small a number, listen to me. And, and, and I get uh, emails coming back letting me know that they listen to me and they like the videos, whether I show myself or whether I don't. There are times where I don't feel like having a, uh, a, um, a model search uh, just to make a video. So yes, I will blacken the video out. <laughs> Forgive me, but there are times when the Lord lays things on my mind and you just you don't want to go through the makeup and, and all that and the hair just to do a video. God is good. I heard another sister say that. It's not my own, uh, but, I, but I do um, relate to what she has said, and it makes a lot of sense. We just want to get the word out. Now, there's times you'll see me, and there's times you won't. Amen. But I'm coming to tell you that this 333, if you've seen it, the number, a lot of times you have no idea why you keep seeing this number. Or if you heard it, Jesus is calling you. And if even if you look in Jeremiah 33, 3, I mean, I did extensive research trying to find out what this 333 3 means. And Jeremiah 33, 3, Jesus is speaking and says, call unto me and see if I won't show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. He's still calling. No matter how you look this number up, it comes to Jesus. Three plus three plus three is what? Nine. What happens in nine months? A human can be born. Amen? Three, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. And, and I did some more research on three. And uh, I would like to tell you also that three means uh, that angels, God has protection around you. You are protected by angels. 
and his angel. You can't command them. Don't try to command them. God tells us not to worship angels. Um, but they are, they are protecting you. Angels are confirming your thoughts. Truth. Trinity. Angels love, protect, and surround you. They are in your midst. You know, some people hear bells, you know, and they wonder what the, what, I thought I heard a bell. I mean, I've had it happen to me. I thought I heard a bell. Angels are around you. God, with the, doesn't the Bible say with God, all things are possible. You just don't get that stuff from Hollywood. Don't wait till some director makes it in a movie and then you begin to believe it. God is real. He can do anything. If he can make a donkey talk, can he make a bell ring? <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm going to turn to Galatians 1.8. I have this written in my notes, and I just want to see what is, what is in Galatians 1.8. And it says, But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. That's telling you right there, don't worship angels. And it's also letting you know that all angels aren't good. Amen. Okay. It's it, it, according to this gospel, angels can preach another gospel beside Jesus. So be very, very careful of what voices you listen to. Amen. The number 333 in Hebrew spells the word SH-L-G of which shaleg is formed s-h-e-l-e-g and it means snow or snowy and then shalag s-h-a-l-a-g which means be as snow there are two possible possible biblical renderings and the number 333 in greek is t-l-g but there is no biblical greek word incorporating these consonants so we'll focus only in hebrew okay which is in the bible 333 is th the, 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 the number 300 and the number 30 and the number 3, which is the S-H with the uh, dash L then the dash G. Shaleg is snowy. Then there's Shigal, S-H-E-G-A-L, which means queen wife. Who do we think of when we say queen wife? The bride of Christ, amen? It says to lie with or to be ravished, see? We are the bride of Christ, and God is just... He's, he's blessing you inside and out, in the city, outside the city, wherever you go, you're blessed. And that's why the enemy picks on you so bad, because he doesn't want you to believe that you're blessed. Amen. But you are. And then we have G-L-S-H, which is galash, which means to appear, to lie down, to be white, and to shine. Okay, all of them contain the key Hebrew letter shin which corresponds to the number 300, which is always used in connection with the Ruach HaKadosh, which is the Holy Spirit of God, the breath of God. Amen. It means excellency, the breath of God. Amen. It, the number corresponds to the Hebrew letter Lamed, or the number, it would be R, R, uh, letter L, not the number, but the letter L. And then uh, number three to Gimel, which is R, letter G, which corresponds to the letters SH-L-G. Amen. Which means snow. And how many uh, scriptures in the Bible tells us that we are to be holy and to be made white as snow? What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Only through Jesus Christ will you be made whole. Amen. White as snow. Amen. God wants you to be made whole. Know this. Praise God. So, it, it also represents purity. I'll go there. White snow, holiness, purity. And guess, it, guess what? It's a keynote to the new covenant work. What is the new covenant? The New Testament, after Jesus was born. When Jesus was born, he cut out all of that. He actually didn't cut it out. He made the law better. That's what he did. He, Jesus made the law better because he knew we would never be able to keep up with the law, which doesn't include, when I say that, I'm not talking about 
the Ten Commandments. Amen. We're talking about the Mosaic Law under Moses. Amen. The Bride of Christ, Queen Wife. Amen. Let, uh, Psalms 45.9. Let me go to Psalms 45.9 and read that as well. King's daughters were among the honorable women. Upon thy right hand did stand the queen in gold of Ophir. So, when you see 333, three, three, think of queens in gold. Beautiful, beautiful gold. This is how God wants you to look. You are the king's kid. Amen. You are the bride of Christ. You are somebody. Don't let the devil speak to you and tell you that you are not. I've been going through some things lately. I've been uh, inter going through intercession, and, and I'm the type of person when I intercede for people, I go through or I feel what they're going through, what they feel, and no, I didn't ask for it, and I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. I've been going through some intercession, and I'm interceding. I, I was interceding a day ago for people who were depressed and um, who didn't feel like living anymore. I mean, when you get these feelings, you know you have these feelings and you experience them, but you know also that it's not you. And I kept saying, this is not me. I know this isn't me. And sure enough, um, a good friend of mine, who is also a fellow Marine, um, died uh, yesterday, uh, a couple hours after I uh, interceded. And, and I prayed and I prayed and, and um, he died. Um, there is a lot of negative energy out there that will try to surround you. And I want to warn people of this. The reason that that negative energy is surrounding you, it is nothing that you did wrong. Actually, it's something that you did right. God has blessed you and the enemy sees it and he is going to try to clip you before you bloom. Please do not allow the enemy to clip you before you grow and bloom. I'm telling you this now. I don't have collegiate words to express this to you. But one thing I can tell you is it's nothing that you did wrong. Sure, some people are going to like you and some people are not going to like you. Don't worry about the ones that don't. Move on in Christ. Don't stop on negative things. Negativity, here's why the enemy keeps trying to bring negativity into your life. The more negative you think, the less people want to be bothered with you because they will feel it. They'll see it. And they're saying, well, isn't so-and-so supposed to be smiling and blessing everybody? How come every time I see them, they're complaining about something? See, the enemy's trying to make you look like a liar. And especially if you're in a ministry field. Amen. And then uh, another thing I want to tell you is the fact that whenever you are constantly negative and when you fall for the enemy's traps and fall into this depression and you fall into self-pity and you wallow in self-pity and you feel bad for yourself, what's happening is you are actually, your physical will react to that spiritual and that mental aspect. Whatever it is you're going through, you, you will physically suffer for that. And a lot of us make ourselves sick by falling for the negative. And yes, there are people out there that the devil puts in your path to aggravate you. Yes, you're not seeing things. They're trying to aggravate you. But the poor people don't realize that they have open doors and are being used by the devil to make you mad, to make you step out of your of your of your uh, spirit they would step out into the flesh and become like them that's my warning to you call on Jesus and when you see that 333 know it's all about Jesus amen call on Jesus know who you are in Christ and if you don't feel so good maybe you're interceding or maybe God's trying to tell you to rest for the day don't be afraid to take a rest and just lay back and enjoy yourself. But keep your mind stayed on Christ, though. You know what I mean? Keep your mind stayed on Christ. You can enjoy yourself. You can relax and eat and have a good time and enjoy your day. Keep your mind stayed on Christ, though. And don't have any open spots for the enemy to filter through. 
because if you give him micro uh, uh, spot, he'll turn it into a macro. He'll take over. Reverend Essie signing off. 333. Three, three. Jesus is calling you. Amen.